While the entity is called a witch, this would not be correct. The Bell Witch story is a ghost tale. The spiritual being calls itself Kate. While it was thought at the time that it was linked to a physically living person, Kate Batts, there was no concrete evidence of this. Sit back and relax as we give the evidence and the story of the Bell Witch. John William Bell Sr. was born sometime in 1750 in Edgecombe County, North Carolina. His parents were William Bell and Ann Jones Bell. He apprenticed as a barrel maker and later decided on a career as a farmer. He married Lucy Morning Williams in 1782 when she was just 10 years old and he was 32 years old. Lucy Morning Williams was born sometime in 1772 in Edgecombe County, North Carolina. Her parents were John Williams and Morning Williams. Her death is not connected to the story, but she died on January 27, 1837, at about the age of 65 years old. She would outlive her husband by 17 years. They would have several children together, Jesse Egbert, Elizabeth Betsy, Richard Williams, John William Jr., Drury, Esther, Zadok II, Joel Egbert and Benjamin. John and Lucy Williams Bell were from North Carolina. In the winter months of 1804 and 1805, they moved themselves and their children to the frontier land of the Red River in Tennessee. This area would later become the town of Adams in Robinson County, Tennessee. This town is on the state line of Kentucky and Tennessee and is 7.4 miles south of Guthrie, Kentucky, and 30 miles from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. For a decade after their arrival, the Bell family lived in peace and quiet. The family would participate in the local activities of the area and seemed to have no issues with the neighbors. The first disturbances came in 1816 when the apparitions and strange noises started increasing over the course of the next year. At times, the Bell family home was violently shaken as if it was in a terrible storm. The Bell family said nothing about this to their neighbors. The spirit started speaking. It would recite prayers, argue scripture, and would imitate the voices of the local people and would sing along with the church congregation at the weekly prayer meetings. At one point, the entity claimed to be called the Old Kate Bats Witch. It would answer positively when the name was used. From this point forward, the name of the spirit would be Kate, Kate Bats, Kate Bats Witch, or the Bell's Witch. The spirit Kate, who was an invisible entity, was able to shape shift and affect the physical environment of the house and the area. It was also credited for being clairvoyant and capable of crossing along distances and being seen at the same time in several places. Sometime in 1817, the entity known as Kate began appearing to John Bell. It would take on the appearance of a creature that closely resembled a dog at first. John Bell would shoot at the animal and it would disappear. Later, Kate would appear to John and his son Drew. It would take on the appearance of an unknown bird. This bird was of extraordinary size and would perch on the fence. As the two would approach, the bird would fly away. Betsy would see the spirit as a girl who was wearing a green dress. The girl was swinging from a limb of an oak tree. Several trusted friends of the family tried to help solve the mystery of Kate and why the spirit was unsettled around the family suddenly. There are many accounts of the spirit telling different people about their families and of gossip being told in the town. Many people that came to the house left as believers. The most famous of the people was General Andrew Jackson, who would later become President of the United States, who made a visit to the family home. He made a visit to see for himself the unknown force that was disturbing his friends and would try to help with the problem. Sources say that Jackson's men ran away in terror. 
There is some speculation if Jackson ever visited the Bell family because there is no other evidence for the visit other than Martin Ingram's 1894 An Authenticated History of the Famous Bell Witch. Spiritual activity increased. Unexplained knocking along the walls and doors of the house could be heard. There were sounds of invisible dogs fighting. There were sounds of something gnawing on the beds. There were also sounds of chains being drugged across the floorboards. Sheets were being pulled off the beds when the children were taking naps or at night when they were sleeping. The hair pulling, slapping, and the sensation of being stuck with pins increased against the children. It is of note Betsy endured the most of the torture of all the children in the house. Betsy would have scratches and welts all over her body. Family members would experience slapping, pinching, taunting, and other forms of harassment. The spirit, known as Kate, would also strip the beds of covers while people were sleeping. John Bell soon fell ill to unexplained and painful physical symptoms. This illness would get steadily worse until his death in 1820. John Bell had paralysis in his mouth and around this time could not speak at times. Kate seemed to have strong feelings towards John Bell Sr., Kate would call him Old Jack and hurl curses, threats, and afflictions at him. It also claimed that it was intending to kill him. Only Lucy Bell, John's wife, would experience kindness by the spirit. Kate would sing hymns to her and give her fresh fruit. The spirit would also show John Bell Jr. a great deal of respect and not bother him. On December 20, 1820, John Bell would pass away after suffering great torment and pain. The spirit, known as Kate, would say that she gave John Bell a toxic liquid that killed him. At his funeral, Kate would disturb the mourners at the wake and funeral by singing drinking songs. Early in 1821, Kate would take a particular interest in John and Lucy's daughter, Betsy, when she became engaged to a local man named Joshua Gardner. Kate would express her anger at the engagement and then step in and keep Betsy from marrying her sweetheart. In the spring of 1821, the spirit left the family but promised the family that it would return. After seven years of silence, the spirit returned in 1828. Upon her return, Kate would appear with similar activities as before. It had even appeared to Lucy and her sons, Richard and Joel. The trio decided not to acknowledge it and it soon left them alone again. There is a cave located on the property that used to belong to the Bell family. The legend states that the Bell children were exploring the cave and one of the children got stuck in one of the holes. Once the boy was pulled out of the hole, the entity gave him a lecture about cave exploration. It is believed that this cave is still haunted by Kate to this day. Several people have reported over the years that they have heard Kate's voice or have seen one of her animal apparitions. There have been many skeptics and believers over the years that have tried to explain the hauntings and occurrences that surround the Bell family. Some of the explanations seem plausible and some seem downright fantastic. Many scientists today think that John Bell was being slowly poisoned by a use of arsenic. Many theories have been put forth as to who would have done this. Another possibility is that a school teacher fabricated the haunting in order to get Betsy to marry him instead of Gardner. However, Betsy would go on to marry Richard Roll Ptolemy Powell on March 21, 1924 in Robinson, Tennessee. She was the mother of Susan Amanda, Emily Carolyn, Pamela Adeline, Eliza Jane, DeWitt Williams, Virginia Reynolds, Tennessee Bell, and Liftrick Reynolds. Another story is that John Bell had murdered a former overseer in North Carolina. That this haunting was related to that murder, and that is why John Bell himself was murdered. There are also tales of jilted lovers and of an accidental death of a woman named Mary surrounding John Bell. Still, 
Others believe that since the stories surround Betsy, she put on this elaborate hoax for the attention or a marriage proposal from Mr. Gardner. It is said according to the New England farmer of Boston and the Green Mountain Freeman of Vermont that Betsy had discovered the art of ventriloquism. She used this gift to try to get Gardner to propose. When he refused to marry her, the haunting stopped. Several books, articles, videos, movies, and other forms of media have been put forth to explain the hauntings of the Bell family. Some of the most famous are The Blair Witch Project in 1999, The Bell Witch Haunting in 2004, The American Haunting of 2005, and The Bell Witch, the movie, in 2007. We have always left it up to our readers to make up their own minds whether or not a story is fact or fiction. But we do have a few questions for our readers and listeners to consider. Were the hauntings real? What happened to John Bell? Who murdered him? Was it arsenic poisoning? Who had the motive to kill him? Why the elaborate story of the haunting to cover their tracks? And most of all, what do you really think happened to the Bell family from 1816 to 1828? We at Kentucky Tennessee Living want to thank you for watching our series on the Appalachian Weird Cases. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring to you the history of the Appalachian Mountains.